Cloud with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is James Qantas, editor and publisher of Resource Opportunities. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. No problem. We are here at PDAC. It's the last day of the conference. How did you find it? What was the mood like? Uh, lots of energy. Uh, lots of always lots of people, but uh, a lot of energy this year, and it seems like things are, are on the upswing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This seems justified to you. How? I think so. I mean, um, you know, gold's trading fairly choppy, um, but uh, the base metals have done well, and, and um, there's still supply uh, supply demand issues. Uh, lots of demand and uh, depleting supply, especially in some of the metals like zinc, for example. And so, um, yeah, I think we're on an upswing. And there's also um, some energy around the battery metals, right? Uh, like uh, I cover a graphite and a graphene company as well. So, yeah. Okay, so lots going on. Yeah. It's, it's our first time talking, at least on camera. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about your background for those who might not know. Sure. Well, my background is journalism. I was in newspapers for 20 years, mm -hmm. um, the last 10 at the Vancouver Sun. Uh, and I also, so I was primarily an editor there, but I uh, was a part-time mining writer as well. So uh, it was actually great practice for what I'm doing now. Uh, they gave me one day a week to write about mining in Vancouver. <laughs> Lots going on there. Uh, so I had to be very selective who I interviewed and what stories I told. Uh, so it's been great. Uh, it was a great preparation for the for the investment newsletter that I write now. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And with your newsletter, what are your goals there? What do you bring to people? So my my goal is to uh, just try to find under the radar stories, ones that um, that people aren't talking about that that haven't been discovered yet by you know by the broader uh, investing community or by other newsletter writers. Uh, for that matter, and the idea is, you know, get in before the herd does, and uh, and uh, and benefit from that. So, yeah. Okay. So we were talking previously about diamonds. Um, mm -hmm. Tell me your thoughts on the diamond market right now. Sure. On. So, so the diamond market has, you know, uh, over the last few years, it's had its ups and downs, like the other ones. Um, but I think. Uh, uh, there's an expert out of New York, Paul Zinniski, who's a diamond analyst, and he, um, you know, he says there's uh, there's a bit of an upswing in both in prices um, and uh, positive on the producer side as well. Um, so, but I, I sort of cover specialty diamonds. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the companies that I cover are less affected by uh, rough diamond prices uh, because of the of the diamonds that they recover um, are sort of in a different price category. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we had some interesting diamond space news last week surrounding Lucara. Can you talk a bit about that and what that could mean for the company? Sure, sure. So Lucara, um, Lucara is a, a Vancouver-based uh, producer of very large diamonds, uh, like the Lissetti Lorona, 1,109 carats, uh, 813 carats. Which you held? Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe I'll backtrack. Um, you know, part of my work is doing site visits mm -hmm. to different countries, and, and uh, so I was fortunate to visit the, Lu the Lucaris Karawe uh, mine in Botswana uh, last about a year ago, um, it, which is a, you know, it's a great asset. Um, uh, that company makes a lot of money; they pay a dividend. Um, and I held the Lasetti Lorona, the 1,100 carat diamond, in my hand. It happened to be there. Um, that was before they sold it for 53 million US. Um, so I initiated coverage on Lucara um, so shortly after they recovered those two very large stones and after they hiked the dividend. Um, and interestingly, the price, the stock price now is almost exactly where it was at that time. Um, so, so Lucara announced that uh, Ira Thomas mm. was taking over as CEO uh, about a week ago. Um, so she's a co-founder of the company and she was pre previously a director. Um, but I think, uh, you know, Fire is well known in the mining world and particularly in the diamond world. She's co-founded two diamond companies, uh, Kamenak Sale to Gold Corp for 500 million. Um, and so I think she's going to build something at Lucara. Um, you know, Lucara has kind of an interesting problem. Their asset, their mine is so rich uh, that almost anything they buy will, will kind of dilute what they have. Um, but I think you know, they realize that as a single asset company, they have to grow. Mm -hmm. And so I th I'm sure Ira has plans to, to do that. You know? Yeah, and we've seen already this year a, a little bit of M&A in the diamond space, so maybe more of that. Yeah, yeah there's actually been a fair bit. Um, you know, Dominion Diamonds, the, the uh, owner of Ikati and Dybek, was sold to a private company. Uh, Kennedy Diamonds, an explorer, uh, was purchased, was sort of repurchased by Mountain Province. 
Um, and then I, I also follow a small junior called North Arrow Minerals. Um, so Ira's father, uh, Gren, is actually the chairman um, of North Arrow. Uh, so, I, so I think Ira taking over, there's a lot of connections between um, North Arrow and Lucar already. Lucas Lundin is North Arrow's largest shareholder. Mm. Um, and so this is just one more connection. So it's kind of a connect the dots story and I think it's bullish for North Arrow as well. Yeah. Okay, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so tell me, other than diamonds, what types of opportunities are you looking at and kind of introducing to your audience? Sure, sure. So um, I guess two of the latest companies I've initiated coverage on, um, you know, one's a, a Platinum Group Metals uh, exploration company uh, with, a, with an asset in, um, in Montana, mm. uh, very near the Stillwater um, deposit. Uh, that one's done well. And then I also cover a graphite and a graphene play. Mm -hmm. And so I like graphite because, um, you know, it's a battery metal, but, um, you know, lithium gets a lot of buzz. Cobalt has gotten a lot of buzz, um, especially with the uh, supply issues. Um, but graphite is uh, so important for batteries, and yet you don't hear much about it. And there's not uh, that many high-quality companies in the space. Um, and graphite's interesting because the, the value actually comes from um, engineering graphite for the finished uh, customer. So it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not in mining it, it's in engineering it for, for, for the specifications of battery manufacturers. And so it's, it's a difficult business to succeed in. Sure. Um, and so the, the, um, so the companies that can, that can succeed will, will do very well, I think. And graphene is, is sort of a new, um, a new metal that's very uh, interesting. Uh, lightweight, stronger than steel, uh, very conductive. So I think that's going to, um, you'll be hearing a lot about graphene in the next, in the coming years as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do you think we'll see a little bit more hype or excitement building in graphite to catch up, catch it up to lithium and cobalt a little bit? Or is it uh, going to stay a little quieter? I don't know, it's interesting, you know. Uh, I always pay attention at these shows to, um, to where the crowds are and aren't. Um, so last year, for example, uh, there was a, a diamond panel of five companies, including Lucar and North Arrow, and um, you know some high caliber, some other high caliber companies. Mm -hmm. And there's hardly anybody there. There was you know maybe 20 people there. Um, you know, but Lucas Lundin was there. Ira Thomas was there. Chuck Fipke, who discovered Canna's first diamond mine, was in the audience. You know, <laughs> uh, and hardly anybody else. So I found that interesting. Uh, and there's more buzz this year around it. Okay. Um, I was at a Vancouver on graphite. I was at a Vancouver show, um, investment show, and there was a graphite panel. And typically, there's three companies at, at that show. There's three companies with a with a moderator, uh, but there's only two graphite companies. Um, so I found that quite interesting, given that it's a battery metal. What's happening with electric vehicles? Um, and yet, there was only two companies at this um, at this show. So that so that was. A bit of an indicator to me that if you can identify a, you know, a very good company, um, you'll probably do quite well. So I think, I think the buzz around uh, graphite will grow, mm -hmm. uh, but particularly graphene, um, yeah, that's one to keep an eye on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's everything from me. Okay. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's great to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great. Thanks, Charlotte. No problem. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investor News Network, and this is James Quantas.